and welcome to Brain vs. Heart. So someone left an interesting comment and I thought I would address it because while some people do know, I know people on here probably don't, and they asked why do I have a childish voice? And I will attempt to answer that. It's a long story, but let's see if we can get into the gist of things. To be fair, I can speak deeper. I had trained myself for years to speak deeper due to being bullied when I was little. Believe it or not, when I was growing up, my voice sounded worse. <laughs> I sounded like this character called Stick Stickly, and my mother, she didn't make fun of me per se, but she would do this thing like, me, 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 and she called me Mouse. That's my nickname, Mouse, because I used to talk like that. And when she sent me over to her uh, friend, a nurse friend, that nurse friend, that lady, would make fun of me. And she would always be like, why do you talk like that? And I'd be like, hi, Auntie Janice. And that was always the way I just talked naturally. That was just how I was comfortable. After being bullied by adults and by kids and also being targeted by people, I realized that me being myself was making me a magnet for people hurting me. So I tried to speak deeper. If you notice in my earlier videos, part of my presentation is speaking deeper. When I'm reading in a story voice, I try to sound more adult. I try to sound more relaxed and people take me more seriously that way. That is a voice that I would use. And when I was growing, up that is a voice I had to put on so that people would take me seriously when I'm angry I cannot be angry in my natural I guess squeaky voice I have to go an octave lower even when I'm schooling my dogs if they're trying to like bite each other's faces and I'm like hey knock it off that doesn't work I have to do the deep voice that's the only thing that resonates to make them stop fighting each other or to make people take me seriously and somebody was asking if it was trauma I mean, to be honest, I mean, who doesn't have trauma? But yes, I do have trauma. Could that be a reason why my voice is squeaky? While I do think that a lot of people who do have that voice might have it because of childhood trauma, I don't think it's a one size fit all. I think it's complete opposite for me. I think that the developed deep voice that I had to put on and train myself to be able to speak that way was because of that trauma, was because I was molested, was because I was bullied and I had to fit in that persona. Only recently did I decide, you know what? Why don't I just try to be myself? I, I just, for the longest while, I had to put on this, um, like this facade to make people take me seriously on YouTube, on in the real world. And even now, you know, nothing against that person or other people because it's not the first person who left a comment like that it's not the first person who told me that I try to now and now and again go back into that kind of deep firm voice and it's very confusing and very annoying because on one hand I'm most comfortable when I'm myself when I can be free and just talk the way I want but on the other hand if I'm in society I have to be like aware that other people are gonna perceive me as look she's just a child and it's really annoying because a part of me that is my integrity part of me is being criticized by people. That's like criticizing someone because of the color of their skin or criticizing someone because of their gender. And I don't think that's fair. It's one of the things that drive INFP nuts. Our natural cherry self is always picked apart by everyone. And imagine being happy and just speaking the way you do and people coming and picking you apart. Why do you laugh so much? You must be hiding something. You must have trauma. Like I legit had a woman at church. Thank God I don't any longer go. But she was really sweet. She funny enough ironically she's always laughing and she'd come up to me it was a Puerto Rican church I went to and I always laugh like when I'm in society I always smile like that's just my thing especially if I'm around people I'm comfortable like I said growing up in school in Brooklyn couldn't do that that was a magnet for people bullying me and wanting to beat me up so when I'm at church I was with these people that everyone's lovey-dovey so this woman comes up to me and she's like why are you always smiling you know you must be hiding something people are always smiling or hiding something and I'm like bitch what okay you're someone I'm gonna avoid from now on why is it that me being happy and being myself has to have some darker element to it and that's something INFPs cannot fucking stand when people look at us and they're like oh you think that the world is all flowers and roses something somebody said to me I'm smiling and I'm happy you must be sneaky 
what? Why? Why does it have to be that? Why can't you just accept me for who I am? And I think what also drives us nuts is that we accept people for who they are. We will see somebody weird or awkward as long as they're not hurting anyone and accept them for who they are. As a matter of fact, the weirder you are, so long as you're not hurting anyone, we accept these people. We're highly tolerate, uh, we're highly, highly tolerable of their people. So when we have it thrown back in our face and no one's tolerant of us for something that just comes to us naturally, it's very frustrating. And this is one of the reasons why INFPs draw away from people. If you've ever had that interaction where you said something regarding something about an INFP or a person that is just an element of who they are, whether it be their voice, their face, their hair, their height, and then they just stop talking to you, chances are you were ignorant and you turned off that person. I get people trying to ask why, but, and there's nothing wrong with asking. I'm all about curiosity. And INFPs naturally are curious, uh, curious so we like when other people are curious. If you ask, us, hey, why do you do this? We're happy to answer you. Even if it makes us uncomfortable, we're, we'll be happy to answer you. What we don't like is when you ask us and we're like, we don't even answer you or we haven't answered you yet. And then you go in to pick us apart because usually you'll be wrong. Maybe you won't, but usually you will be. Every time someone's ever done that with me, they were 100% wrong. And it was very awkward and just came off as very condescending. And so I stayed away from those people. So that is the reason um, trying to get Get back into who I was before I had to become who I became in Brooklyn kind of reminded me why I had to become that person and I never imagined that now that I'm no longer in that situation now that I no longer go to school in an area where there's a ghetto right next door where every morning almost you hear gunshots where you have to be careful because if you look at someone the wrong way or say hello to someone they want to beat you up like legit had people want to beat me up at the end of the day because I waved at them and said good morning. If you understood the shit that I had to go through just going to school, imagine someone thinking, yes, that the world was beautiful, that everybody's beautiful, and they want to love everybody, and being thrust into a place like that. My mom didn't know about it, and th the worst part about it is I was an honor student. I didn't have to go there. I just went there because my friends were going there, and we were close, and I, I just, I didn't, ex I didn't know it was going to become one of the top 10 worst schools in the U.S. I had no idea, and I could have transferred, but and I stayed because my, my friends were there. It's stupid. And, and that's a very awkward reason for an INFP to stay. But there was a few of my friends I had there that depended on me. Um, they were the goth kids, funny enough. But they depended on me. A lot of them were going through some stuff and I kind of was the glue that held them together, their words. And so I said, you know what? I'll stay. I know it would make them sad if I left and I, I just stayed. I wouldn't care <laughs> either way if I went to this other place, but I already formed a bond with them, especially one particular girl. And I suffered. <laughs> But it wasn't as bad in that element, um, especially when I moved to the high school. Like that whole that whole element of my life was just very life changing. I matured very quickly. <laughs> I matured very quickly just going to school in the U.S. Oh my goodness, the, the culture shock first of all from my country, and then moving here and, and the bitterness and anger of a lot of these kids is just it was a shock for me. And nobody prepared me for that. I don't think my mother even understood or knew what was going on. And then later when I did tell her about it, she was like, why didn't you tell me so I could pull you out of school? You didn't tell me you were being bullied, like none of that. And because I'm always naturally introverted anyway, and she was also kind of beaten up on me a little bit. So I had no, I, I wouldn't have gone to her. If your mother is also the one bullying you, why would you go to her about being bullied at school? I don't even feel safe around my mom. Why would I even go to her? So it's, it's a lot, but as for my voice, I try not to go too high pitched. I do have to try to control it, but I also don't want to put on the fake thing because when I speak the way I did in school it makes me feel fake that wasn't the real me that's me being someone more serious so that people take me more serious so that I don't sound like a child and so people don't treat me like a child and I always had to do that when I was around people when I'm with my imaginary friends and I'm talking to my imaginary friends or I'm in my little world I'm just 100% me and it feels very sad that I cannot be that way around people without being criticized for something that is a part of me. This is one of the reasons why INFPs hate society and stay away from people. But anyway, are there any other INFPs that feel the same? Have you ever been thrust into a situation where you feel like you can't be yourself? If, if nobody else had to go through that, I'm very happy for you. Mind you, I don't 100% regret it because it did make me who I am today. I am strong. And when I do have to be that person, now I can do so almost effortlessly. I'm aware that I'm doing it, very aware that I'm doing it, but it's not as uncomfortable because in those situations, 
situations I know I have to do that to survive, and I've already played that part long enough trying to survive. Anyway, I hope that clears things up. Anyone else have anything else to add? Feel free to do so in the comments.